Okay. So let's see. Samantha, welcome. Welcome to the session. This is a public session, but it's part of a course, a four-week course uh, that is not completely free. But these sessions are. If you want to get a certificate, you will have to join the class. So there are some privileges to the paid participants. So Carl is teaching advanced grammar and idioms on WizIQ. Congratulations. That's great. And um, Mildred, welcome, is from Venezuela. We've got Samantha from the UK. And Carl is also from the UK. All right, so great. We'll probably have others joining in as we go, and the rest will view this as a recording. And there's a lot of value in being in a live class. So I'm glad you're here, and we'll get started. You may use the chat box for questions as we go. Think of this as a class where you can speak to one another through the chat box. You can interrupt me at any time, and you can share uh, anything you like in the chat box. So uh, this is a great way to uh, make the use of whatever technologies is available. So the purpose of um, TC Web Technologies, which is a course, is for the participants to practice active learning. So you will learn about active learning and you will practice active learning as teachers or students or will be teachers, future teachers. Uh, you will be modeling communication since uh, TESOL is teaching English to speakers of other languages. English is a language. It's a language of communication unlike Latin that I studied, <laughs> which was very difficult uh, to speak and use as a communicative language. So you will be modeling what you'd like your students to be doing since you are the experts, and we'll be using technology for learning and, of course, um, for teaching. Some of the uh, web technologies that we'll be using in this course, and you'll be learning how to use, you'll be experts. By the end of the course, you will be experts on these technologies. Uh, the one on the left, the top left, is Google Drive. Okay, so you will hopefully be using uh, Google Drive with your students and in this course so that you are familiar. How many of you, by the way, have used Google Docs as a teacher or as a student or both? If you could add a smiley, thumbs up. Oh, you use it, Carl? That's great. I've been using it uh, for a number of years. Good, Samantha. That's great. That's wonderful. Because Google Drive is really a wonderful way to connect and for students to learn from one another and, of course, from the teacher. Uh, hello, Helena, and welcome. Helena, good to see you. Sorry for making that mistake. Um, Google Drive used to be Google Docs. Now they call it Drive. So, but it's uh, it's getting really, really good and uh, a great way to connect and learn. You'll be uh, learning about Present Me. Present Me is also technology. Anyone familiar with Present Me? I'll just add that. Uh, present, if you're familiar with it. Present Me. Okay, so this is new. Uh, you'll familiar. All these tools are not only for you as teachers, they're for your students to use so that they can be doing activities and creating artifacts as uh, active learners. Okay, so present me. And these tools are completely free. Okay, present me is free. And then there's Jing. How many of you have heard of Jing. Jing is also completely free. There used to be a, um, what happened here? Um, there used to be a pro for Jing. I had the pro, but they, they don't have that anymore. 
So Samantha hasn't heard of Jing. Has anyone heard of um, Jing? Let's see if I can get up. There we go. There's a box for Jing. Carl says HD. Oh, not as video. Oh, sorry. Not for videos. <laughs> no, no, not for videos. It has limitations. No, not for it. Just for, um, <laughs> sorry, just for images. Okay. The Jing is for images. I'll get into uh, what each of these is best for, but uh, no, Jing for images. The text is not readable. Okay. We'll have to see about that. Uh, next is slide speech. Have you heard of slide sl slide speech? We've had the speaker a few times as John Graves is doing a PhD in Australia, although he's an American. He's been there for a while. Um, slide speech, completely free. And my students love it uh, because they don't have to use their voices. They can create slides, have someone else uh, speak for them. Okay, so there's slide speech. Uh, if you're familiar with that, if not, you will be familiar. And of course, it's free. Integrating technology is a Moodle. Some of the courses are free, some are not. And then there's WizIQ. You'll be learning how to create classes, how to use classes, how to use the whiteboard for uh, teaching. Oh, Jing. Okay, no problem. I use Jing just for the uh, images, to cut images, not for nothing else. Thank you, Carl. And then, of course, there's the Snagit. Okay, Snagit. Snagit is um, the pro version of Jing. It's really good. And the videos are excellent. But it costs something like, I think, maybe $20 a year. It does cost. And then there's my favorite. Okay, on the bottom left. And that screencast o -matic, completely free. But I pay $20 for the Pro because I get more stuff. But it's really, really good. So screencast o -matic for videos, screenshots. It does everything the TechSmith does, but for free. So anybody hear about screencast o -matic? Okay, there it is, Screencast-O-Matic. This is for videos, for images. It's a whole package. And you can write, in other words, I can um, videotape this class and write on it as I go, uh, which is a great way. I've, I've used um, Screencast-O-Matic with most of the um, videos that I create on YouTube. So that's Screencast-O-Matic. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. It's amazing that anyone would do such a thing for free. Um, Screencast-O-Matic. And then there's Moodle, of course. Moodle is completely free, but you need to install it. You need to know how to install it, and you need to upkeep it because the 2.4 uh, is could be problematic unless you know what you're doing, but it's pretty easy to learn. And that's it. Okay, these are the tools that we'll be using. Uh, during the five weeks. Now, a little bit about the layout of the course. The course is not only on WizIQ and on Moodle, but it's beyond. I don't like to use one platform. I like to use whatever works with whatever students, because students also have their preferences, believe it or not, and we can't be too controlling with our students. So, WizIQ and Moodle. The purpose I've told you, the layout we'll be talking about in a minute or two. We'll be talking about the course on WizIQ. I think you got to know it. How many of you uh, feel comfortable so far with the uh, WizIQ layout? Just let me know. I'm talking about the WizIQ course layout course layout. You do, Helena. <laughs> That's great. So Helena is here too, not just Halima. Um, thank you, Helena. I thought I saw you before. You're loving it, Carl. I'm so happy because you know what? Attitude is so important. Um, 
things are a lot better than we realize when we have an open mind willing to give it a chance and um, anyone who gives technology a chance is going to benefit in big ways trust me all right we'll also be talking about the Moodle course because um, it's also a Moodle course the web technologies that I showed you before we'll talk about active learning those of you who have taken courses with me I think Helena has um, I'm not sure about the others so I'll just write the question here um, do you know what I mean by active learning okay do you know you might know it and maybe you use it in your classes but you know Helena knows what uh, is meant by active learning and Halima <laughs> Hello, Ibrahim, and welcome. Okay, we're just starting out. You haven't missed much. And you can get these um, this presentation, actually. I've posted it, but you can also get it on WizIQ, and I'm going to add it to the chat so you can have it right there, and you can follow along with me. You can actually hear my voice and follow the... Uh, you can also download... Most of the things that I do are completely open. You can do whatever you want with it. And we're also going to focus on reflections. Okay. Feel free to ask questions as we go. Layout of the course, as I said, it's in two areas. It's on WizIQ and Moodle. A little bit about WizIQ, I presented, I don't know if you saw this, um, a little bit about TESOL with WizIQ or on WizIQ. WizIQ is a web technology, just like Moodle is. And a little bit about the courseware. On the courseware you have content and the live class. In addition, um, you can screen share every class that you create and you give Carl you can screen share even if you don't make the class available to students you can actually do a flipped classroom or a video of a presentation that you want to give in the WizIQ class such as this one and then you can use screen castomatic or if you want to pay for something more expensive, you can also use uh, Camtasia, okay, which is expensive. And then you can uh, upload it to YouTube. Once you upload it to YouTube, you can have it, you can download it and share it on Google Drive and then share it with your friends. There's the tricks and ways of not spending money and doing a lot of uh, creative things okay we'll be talking about uh, google drive as i mentioned before and you'll be able to use google drive uh, in your courses you'll be able to upload different tasks Use the wiki and the glossary on the Moodle. These are different things that you'll be able to do on the Moodle. And you'll be able to publish your work using blogs, reflect, and so on. So let me go back to the WizIQ course. The courseware, as I mentioned, there are live online classes and recordings. The content comes in the form of Word. How many of you have uh, uploaded Word on with IQ word on with IQ not many people know that you can download word on with IQ into your content oh you have Carl great wonderful so you can upload word you can upload a PowerPoint presentation a PDF file audio how many of you have uploaded an audio on with IQ Okay, audio on WizIQ. Anybody? Well, if you haven't, you can do that too. You can also 
upload video. Yes, Helena, but also audio. Not too many people know that you can also, there is value in audio, especially for uh, uh, English language learners, because sometimes it's better for them to practice listening without actually seeing anything. So it's a good exercise in listening, especially tests that they have uh, in listening where they do need to listen and focus on that. That's the courseware. It's called courseware. There's also the course feed. Now, what is a course feed? I gave a four hour presentation on the War of the Worlds live stage show. That's great. That's great. Were you able to record it? Because um, with Camtasia, you can record four hours. But Screencast O Matic, I think that it's only two hours. There's also something called TipCam, where you can do um, TipCam unlimited hours six seven hours they didn't show up well hmm we'll have to talk about that and see why all these technical things we should discuss so that we can find solutions and things that you wish you had you can also uh, ask the team at was iq to cater to your needs so course feed, what is a course feed in simple English? Because course feed is just a technical term that the team at WizIQ decided to use, but actually, what is it? And it's also, it's not just the team at WizIQ, actually. It's a program that was developed by other tech people, and WizIQ uses it. Ibrahim, course feed, <laughs> you're right. It sounds like some kind of upload, doesn't it? But it's not. If you've been to WizIQ, if you've taken a course, uh, or if you created a course, you would know this. But if you haven't created a course, you might not. And since uh, all of you will be creating courses, and Carl, you said you have a course. So do you know what a course feed is? You do. All right, so what's another English word for it? I can give everybody a hint. It starts with a D. Actually, it's two words if you want. Okay, it's a no, oh, I don't see the <laughs> you don't know. It's a discussion forum. It's a discussion forum. Some people say forum, some people say discussion forum, some people say just a discussion. It's a place to um, add your discussions. On Moodle, for example, it's called a comment box. You know, it could be a comment box, a chat box. Every, um, every system has another name, but we know it as a discussion area or a discussion form. So the course feed. Um, teachers can initiate a course feed. So in the course, Yes, exactly, Carl. That's why I want you guys to understand it so that you can explain it to your students when you create a course. That a courseware is the content, and in the courseware, okay, in the sorry about that, in the courseware, there is the live online classes, the content, and in the uh, course feed, it's just a discussion. So teachers can start a discussion or participants, your students can start a discussion. Are you asking me a question? You know that I'm always ready to do anything you ask, Halima. So the answer is probably yes. I just gave a thank you for asking. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate that more than you realize. Um, it certainly has a compliment. I consider it a compliment if you're inviting me. Um, of course, I presented yesterday in Turkey uh, at a university in Turkey uh, to teachers on academic writing research, and, and it's a pleasure, a pleasure. And I don't take any money for it, of course, but I always find time. So feel free to ask me. And you can ask others as well. Okay, I'm sure others will be happy too. The purpose of the courseware, the course feed, or the discussion forums is uh, 
for introductions, you can start the course with uh, introductions. You introduce yourself. You saw that. I created that. Also, is a support forum where students can use it to ask questions, add comments, and you can use it for topics. You can have different, divide your course into different topics in the course feed, and then students will add to that. And you can also share assignments. Now, you share assignments through links. So the assignments would be somewhere else, and the students would be adding their links. WizIQ doesn't have uploading assignments yet. But they will. With my push, they will. Okay, so we'll wait for that. Now, as far as the Moodle, oh, it's okay. Halima, contact me, and I will. I will be happy to. Uh, I know why it's not working because it's probably uh, too many words there. Moodle course. Uh, in the Moodle course, you will be uh, getting resources. You'll be able to uh, do the activities. Eventually, you'll be able to add your own resources, add activities. The reason I'm using a Moodle course in addition to WizIQ is to supplement what WizIQ doesn't have right now. And that is, it has resources. It doesn't have the activities that I want it to have. And WizIQ doesn't have a tracking system. Moodle has a great tracking system so that teachers can track their progress. But not, thank you, Halima. But not only teachers can track their progress, students can too. And this is really important. You know exactly where your students are in a Moodle course. You know exactly whether they're reading something or doing an activity. You know if they're wasting their time. You can actually give tests on Moodle. Have the students, ask the students to have their cameras, webcams on. You can ask them to have it so that it's slow, so that you can look at their hands, where their hands are. And uh, you can uh, check them. There are a lot of things you can do through the Moodle. And of course, you'll be getting certificates. If you join the Moodle course, you will be getting certificates. And let me share the, uh, the document where all the information is available. I know many of you have joined the Moodle course, but those who haven't, there's the link. Yes, Helena, tracking is spying, but it's not, <laughs> it's not bad spying. It's just a chance for everybody to make sure that the students are doing what they know they have to do or they don't know that they have to do. If you find your students, um, you know, lost, what if they're lost? They're not doing the activities, not because they don't want to, but they're lost. They don't know where to go. So this is a good way to uh, help them when they're lost. So they're, they're good things, even for spying. All right, so let's take a look at the uh, technologies. But actually, before we go, I'd like to screen share if I can. If I can screen share, then I apologize because I'm using a Mac. And um, for some reason, my Mac is getting old. And old Macs um, cause problems. You don't have to, Ibrahim, you don't have to test your students online. You can test them face-to-face. -face. By the way, Ibrahim, do you teach face-to-face -face or do you teach only online? If you teach face-to-face, -face, your test will be face-to-face. -face. You're not going to give a test online. I'm talking about teachers who only teach fully online and they want to test their students online. There are different ways of making sure that the students are not cheating. That's, that's the reason for it. Okay, so let's take a look. I'm going to uh, screen share by going into uh, the Moodle. Okay, this is the Moodle. It's called Integrating Technology for Active Lifelong Learning. The link uh, to the course is uh, here on the... Um, syllabus. I see there are a few people here on the syllabus for the course. Here you can see um, the information on the course. 
The course is starting today. This is, uh, it's a five-week course. You can see the explanation. And there are two places. There's the WizIQ area. There's the link. And there's the Moodle Management System link. So I'm go going to go to the, um, the course. Okay, this is the course. This is what it looks like. And I'm going to go in as um, the teacher. I'm going to switch my role so that you don't get confused because I have a teacher teacher's role. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Okay, here is the, um, the presentation that I showed you before. The syllabus is here. Okay, the syllabus. And it's divided into five weeks. Okay, the course has ticks. These are check marks. Once you finish an activity, you do that. Now, what are the activities? Everything that is clickable is an activity. So you go into all of the red, okay? These are all activities. Basics is week, the first topic. The second topic is teaching and language skills. How to teach speaking skills, listening, reading skills. It's all very, very, uh, organized okay and then you go into these activities and then there's teacher practice area where you will be practicing how to create lesson plans of course using technology there's also teaching vocabulary and grammar and then testing in the classroom now there's also a teacher practice area which is also part of the course. I see Larry is here. Let me uh, go in. I'll go back to my normal role so I can show you where the practice area is. All the participants who join this course will be able to go into the practice area. And I'm going to do this in the funny way. I'm going to go into Larry's account and that's the practice area. Sorry, Larry. Okay, that's the practice area. So everyone who joins the course will have two courses. One course is to learn as a student and the other course is to practice. So in this course, you will become a teacher. You will turn editing on and take a topic, choose the topic, and start working and practicing different skills in the topic area. Okay, you can change the name of the topic to your name. Okay, I'm not going to do it now. And you can also learn how to Moodle. If you're not familiar with Moodle, you will learn because you will have no choice. If you want to add it activity or resource you click on add an activity and resource and there is a list of activities all these assignments you can try these out and learn about the Moodle one activity is the Wiz IQ if you don't know what these are you click on them and you get an explanation in addition there are resources there's a book resource Here's a little bit about the book resource. This is what you add for the students to learn from. You create an, a book and you can have chapters and this is their textbook. You can add images, YouTube videos or other videos. Uh, there's also the file and there's explanation on the right folder with explanations. You can add um, IMS content package, uh, you can add a page, a URL, and so on. Okay, and you just click add and it happens. So the, these are different things that you will practice. So it's not only a course, let's go back to the TESOL course for you as a learner. So here you are a learner and in the practice course you are a teacher. So actually there are two main sections. There's the WizIQ course and there's um, 
Here, let's go to the WizIQ course. There's the WizIQ course and the Moodle course, two areas. Okay, let's take a look at the WizIQ course. Okay, here is the course. It's called Teaching English to Speakers of Other Languages, TESOL with Web Technologies. And let me show you. Okay, here's the course feed. A course feed is a discussion. Okay, I can add discussions. Okay, these are discussions. Each of the classes also becomes a discussion. When you create a class, a live online class, it turns into a discussion. That's the course feed on the left. And then you have the courseware. The courseware is the content. The content is the PowerPoint presentations, the live classes. Here is a tutorial uh, Word document. Here's music. Okay, I've added music audio, and you could probably hear it. I love this song. And the words are here as well, so the students can listen and follow. There are different things that you can do um, and add to your WizIQ course. Okay, so this is where you'll get the content. These are the number of course users right now. Uh, live online classes and the course learners. You're also able to learn about the course learners. And that's WizIQ. Uh, let's take a look at some of the uh, technologies that I mentioned. First of all, I mentioned Google Drive. Okay, this is my Google Drive. And we'll be talking about the different kinds of documents, whether it's a Word document, PowerPoint, spreadsheet, uh, research form, or survey form, or drawing. And there are more apps. If you click on more apps, you will learn that you can also add audio <laughs> to your Google. Okay, you can add audio. I've done it. And there are other applications that are completely free that you might want to look at and learn about. So yes, there's GeoGebra if you're a math teacher. Yes, Google Drawing. Google now has applications. Lots of applications. Notice Soho is also part of uh, Google Drive. So you might want to, there's also Open Google, you might want to take a look at all the different things, the different applications that it has. Notice I just went to Download Drive for Mac. I can also do that. If you go to More, you get lots of other activities. So that's Google. In addition, present me. I said I would show you a little bit about present me. Okay, so um, here's present me. It's completely free. Uh, all you do is you add a PowerPoint presentation and you present yourself. Okay, and there should be an explanation right here so that you can see there how it's done. Students love this. They love to create PowerPoints and add voice and make them interesting. So this is a great way to work with your students. In addition, it's just called Present Me. Let me turn that off. In addition, here is Snagit. Okay, you might want to try a free trial to see what it's like. I suggest you always try something for free and then see if you like it. You might not like it, but you might love it. Here is Jink. There is a video here if you want to learn about it. It's completely free. And yes, you need to download it. And then there's my favorite, Screencast-O-Matic. Okay, I have a Pro, but even if you don't have a Pro, it's completely free. And the Pro, I think, is $19, and it's really worth it. And that's a great way to not only 
create videos, but to write as you talk and show your PowerPoint presentations, for example, you also use a drawing board and it's absolutely fantastic. You have to use it to see how great it is. And then of course there's screen slide speech. You need to sign up. Students love it because they can also use uh, different kinds of PowerPoint presentations. And here they can also use their mobile and cell phones. Okay, let's see what I haven't showed you yet. I think that's it. Okay, so let me share the, um, there we go, the syllabus and we're back. So I hope you were able to see that. If not, you'll see it on the recordings. So here we are, there's the um, syllabus. So Google Drive, as I said, now has many, many more options like uh, it has audio. You can add audio. Now, another great thing about Google Drive that people don't realize, if you have a huge video file and you don't want to pay money because you want to send it to a friend, you can upload it to Google Drive and share it with your friends and then they can download it from Google Drive. So it's a great way to uh, send big files, big video files. And it's a wonderful way to keep your heavy video files on the cloud and away from your computer because video files really do slow down our computer systems. So we don't have to save anything on our systems anymore because of Google. You'd think I was doing them an advertise, but I'm not. I'm not advertising them because I don't get anything from them. But they are great and they're doing things for free. All right, Google Drive is a great way to share and learn along with your students. If you're teaching them how to improve their writing, um, how many of you have used Google Drive for writing? I think Carl and uh, was it Samantha mentioned that they use it. How do you use it? Or if anyone else who came in a bit later uses Google Drive. How do you use it with your students? I think maybe you lost. I hope you didn't lose the chat. If your chat went to the bottom left, you need to pop it back up. So um, I hope that's the case. You may find that your chat is now at the bottom left hand side of your WizIQ screen. So what you do is you click on it, it pops in the middle, and then you click on it and gets back to the right. You found the chat. Sorry, I forgot. I didn't, I took it for granted that uh, everything is back in place for you. Okay, that's great, Samantha. So this is a chance to really practice uh, and get feedback from us. Hello, Jack. Good to see you. Um, okay, so everybody is with the chat now. I hope you're all able to use the chat. Okay, so yes, there are a lot of ways I teach um, actually writing. I do everything on Google Drive, not only with my students, but with my colleagues. It's a great way to learn to share um, and collaborate so students can learn from each other's mistakes. The teacher, you can actually correct one student and everybody else sees it and they can correct their own work and then they correct each other's work. It really improves their writing. I was looking for something for years to help my uh, EFL students improve their writing and I, and I wasn't going to give up, but Google Drive has made it happen. You can use text on Google Drive, PowerPoint, presentation, form, spreadsheets, images, videos, and now there's an audio apps. So you can add your comments to your students by voice and they can respond to you by voice. So if you've used VoiceThread, forget it. VoiceThread is useless. I, I used VoiceThread uh, from the very beginning, but now with Google Drive and the audio, I've got a wiki and voice. 
uh, to connect with the students. So you can connect with your students through comments, through uh, audio. You could even add videos now to Google Drive. So it's really amazing what you can do with it. So we're going to practice. It's not enough to know that these technologies are great. Okay, I know what it sounds like. Oh, she's talking great, great, great. You got to do it. And that's what this class is about. This class is about active learning, which means that you'll be learning by doing, not by hearing me. Okay, you're going to be working hard all week uh, on this. Okay, then there's Screencast-O-Matic. I told you this is my favorite. It wasn't always my favorite. I was using uh, a really expensive program called Camtasia, really expensive. How many of you are using Macs, by the way? If you can just, I mean, I can check in your, and see, but how many are using Macs? If you can give me a thumbs up if you're on a Mac or a thumbs down. Okay, if you're using a Mac, Samantha, then you will need to learn a little bit. If you're going to use Screencast-O-Matic, I'll tell you how you can uh, record. There's a certain way to record uh, for the Macs, but for the PCs, uh, it's quite simple. Jack? Okay, so Jack has no problem. Samantha, you'll have to get some answers from me. Okay, great, Carl. Good. Okay. Um, and then Jing, of course, uh, Carl mentioned that he had some problems with Jing. I only use Jinx to cut images and paste them on PowerPoint presentations. Instead of saving a picture, I, uh, I just cut things up the way I want them. Uh, it's, it's very empowering. You know, it's, it's um, a funny thing to say, but having control of technology is very, very empowering. And with practice, which is what you're going to be doing, you'll get what you need and you'll feel wonderful. Snagit. Snagit costs, I think, also $19, $20 a year. It's great, but I like Jing. So I have both. And then there's TipCam. TipCam is completely free. I used it many years ago. I don't use it anymore, but it's completely free. You shouldn't Google TipCam because I think it's also... Uh, something undesirable. I don't know. It's uh, strange. Let me get the right tip cam for you so you don't um, get the wrong one. Let's see if I can find the right one for you because I know I heard they have different things. But tip cam is for the PC. Oh, here it is. I found it. Um, and it's excellent. Really, really good. Here we go. Once I, um, I Googled it and I got something very, very unpleasant. You like to engage, Rahim. I love it. I, I think it's just, the, it's so easy to use and so user-friendly with, with the text. And, and I love the arrows. You see, Snagit costs money, costs $20. But I don't like, it. I don't like the arrows. The arrows are so much better in Jing. So uh, try them both. You know, you can get Snagit, get a free trial and see what it's like. And Jing, of course, is free. And then there's TipCam. Yes, please do. Please share the problem that you have, Carl, so that um, I can help and see. And then there's Present, as I said. You'll be using Present, trying it out. And Slide Speech. Audacity. How many of you uh, have used Audacity? I love Audacity. The sound is so clear. You just Google it. You download it. Loving Audacity. What? And it's free. Completely free. It's also open source. So it's like Moodle. It's completely free. Easy to um, download. And Vokey. Is anybody using Vokey? My students love it, especially the shy ones <laughs> who don't want to speak. So they have an avatar. Vokey is an avatar. They have an avatar speak for them. So uh, Vokey is uh, a wonderful way for students to have fun because that's what it's all about. If our students are having fun, we look good. <laughs> 
okay we look good when they're having fun and i'm sure that we enjoy it too because we're going to be having fun watching them have fun so Voki is really a lot of fun it's an avatar that speaks they can play around with it uh, add different uh you know parts of the body different parts of the face clothes put clothes on them so it's a lot of fun not only for the young kids but also uh, for any age And these are different ways for our students to be active. Okay, that's audio. Active learning. Well, active learning, if you didn't understand it until now, and if you're not sure about it, active learning is actually creating artifacts. That means that students learn through doing, and you're going to be doing it so that you get the feel for what it is. Because if you don't do it, you're not going to know what it is. Okay, so it's actually learning through doing. And teachers do it all the time. Teachers are perfect examples of the perfect student. The student who knows how to learn. Because teachers are always creating things. They're creating PowerPoint. They're coming up with technologies. So uh, we want our students to be able to do the same. We want them to create artifacts images, text, audio, video. We want them to be able to communicate with others and to learn. And of course, PowerPoint presentations are a great way for everyone to get engaged. And of course, reflective learning. In order to sustain your learning, it's not enough to practice, even though practice is wonderful, but you'll have to practice all the time so you don't forget. And we can't possibly do everything every single day. So by reflecting, we sustain. It helps us uh, remember things. So how many of you have blogs? Do you have a blog? At least one. Okay, if you can give me a thumbs up. I don't want to count how many blogs I have because I have to Google Nelly Deutsch to find out what I have. Okay, great. Helena has, and Helena, I think you're having a good time with your blog. Very good, Samantha. So this is time to get a blog. Now, blogs are free. You don't need to pay anything. Okay, you can get a Google. You go into Google and you write blog and you, you can get a free Google um, blog or you can get a WordPress blog for free. You might try both, but I don't know what you prefer. How many have both? How many have a Google blog and a WordPress blog? Oh, thank you. Thank you for doing that, Carl. By the way, at the end of the class, you can actually copy the chat and take everything with you. And when you listen to the recording, you'll be able to click on everything. Anything that's um, active, an active hyperlink will become, um, will open up in a new window and you'll be able to uh, view it. So which do you prefer, Helena? WordPress or Google blog? I don't know. I think I pr prefer google blog because i have both but i'm not sure in any case wordpress <laughs> okay yeah it, it has different features and it's up to you in addition there are wikis you can also uh, create how many of you have an account on wiki spaces let me know if you have wiki spaces it's also a way to have courses you can create a course on wiki spaces too okay carl wordpress Okay, Wikispaces is free, especially if you teach in a school, whether high school, K-12, or higher education. There's also Wiki Educator. Anybody familiar with Wiki Educator? I, um, I used to work for Wiki Educator. In other words, I got paid for giving online classes on how to use Wiki Educator. It was a nice experience. They paid really well. They don't pay anybody anymore, so uh, not too many things happening there.
And of course, there's PB Works, which I hate, <laughs> but I use it because other people use it, so I have no choice. So PB Works. Anybody familiar? PB used to be the sandwich. Oh, I think I just lost my connection. I wonder why. Okay, there we go. I just lost my uh, connection, which is funny. Okay, I lost my connection there for a few seconds. So there's PB Works, which is also a wiki. Some people prefer my students, you know, they're divided. I ask them, I, I do everything with my students and I ask them to choose. Some of them uh, prefer wiki spaces and some prefer Edmodo. Not too many, they hate Edmodo. Most of them hate Edmodo and some prefer blogs. So, you know, it's up to um, the individual what they like. Oh, Helena, you have a PB Works. Oh, that's a huge question, uh, Halima. That's a huge question. That that's a question for a whole course. No, I'm kidding. Um, that's a good question. You might want to join the course and get answers. All right, my philosophy. Just a little bit about my philosophy, just to uh, reassure you <laughs> where I'm coming from. Uh, I believe that learning is what it's all about just as Martin Heidegger says, uh, teaching is great if it uh, allows students to learn. And the person that I follow alongside Martin Heidegger is Carl Rogers, uh, who took most of his ideas from Martin Heidegger, and that is to permit the student to learn. And he did this in a book called Freedom to Learn. And I think there's freedom to teach students to learn. Not all teachers are allowed to let their students learn because of the system. Because um, some schools dictate to teachers what to do and what not to do. Okay, so uh, we're talking about learning and effective learning. Effective learning is much more than uh, talking to the students. It's getting the students to engage. And you can see them engaging right here. Uh, Sir Ken Robinson has said it a million times that learning is very important, but teaching is even more important because teaching is an art. Now, is this going to be you? Are you going to be teaching on a blackboard? Is this how you want to be teaching? Would you say that this is an effective teacher? Thumbs up if you think it's an effective teacher. Thumbs down. Even though it's Doris Day and she's beautiful. She is absolutely beautiful. She was a beautiful well, she's not around anymore, but she was a beautiful human being. You know, it's wonderful to have a beautiful teacher, but nobody cares. Okay, that's not learning. That's just watching. And uh, watching isn't enough. So, what I believe in is that we're here to teach others to learn. That's what it's all about. It's teaching our students how to learn and getting them to teach in order to learn. And we're going to be using Moodle and WizIQ to do that. So I'd like to thank everybody for joining us. We've got a few minutes, about four minutes. If uh, you'd like to uh, ask a question or um, speak and say hello. Yes, uh, let me give you, Carl, I, don't, I hope we have enough time. Let me try to give you... Um, where are you? Give you the tools so you can maybe bring up. There we go. So you can share the uh, the document, or is it a link that you wanted me to? Um, there, I think it's a link that you wanted me to look at. Uh, but I need to go into my account to look at it. Uh, and I'm not sure which account you shared it with. So. 
I'm not able to do that because I'm not logged into WizIQ. In order to see that, Carl, I need to go into WizIQ. Oh, you bring it up. That's great. Okay, maybe we'll make it. I don't know how long it takes because sometimes, oh, it looks, it looks like it's an image. No, it's a PowerPoint presentation that Carl is currently uploading into the whiteboard. There we go. Let's see what it looks like. Thank you, Carl. This is something that you could also do with your class. You can get your students to be part of the lesson. They can also, okay, let's see. What did you do here? Okay, let me give you voice because I don't really know what's. Sorry. I hope, uh, there uh, we go. Yes, Hi, Carl. Uh, yeah, this there. is this is what I did for my student. One of my students couldn't find the class, uh, so I um, tried a little Jing uh, capture. Um, so this is the link for the uh, for the classes. And this is what it looks like. Uh, so I'm inviting my students to find the join class button. And then that suddenly turns into a launch class if it's a couple of minutes before the, uh, the actual class start. And as we can see. Um, and my students say, well, I, cannot, I can never find the link to join your with IQ, IQ class. Um, so I'm saying, well, if you, if you look at the schedule, the current schedule, join all the available classes in that schedule, then you'll automatically get the notification on when the class is about to, uh, to start. And for some of them, it seems to be an impossible task. Uh, they end up getting lost in, in the coursework. And I said, well, yeah, that's a way of doing it. So, um, you go through the coursework, click on your live and upcoming classes, and then basically launch class. But the problem I have here, the Jing page, you just can't read it. it it's, it's, it's like it's not in high definition. It's high definition unreadable now if this was a yes. uh, word i know why i oh okay i know why it's too, oh, your your screen tell. is too large your screen is too small you see what jing does what you see is what you get you see there's a difference in um in the size you're, you must have a really big screen from what i can see just like i do i've got a huge screen right uh, what size of screen do you have? Not at all. It, it, it's, um, I think it's 11.5 TFT. It's, uh, it's a laptop. Well, the th yeah. Well, the thing is that you have, you'll be able to see that. Um, and I'm not sure whether you, how you saved it. There are different ways of doing it. The way I usually do it is I do it on a PowerPoint presentation slide. I copy it and I paste it on the slide and then I know exactly I can manipulate the size and then I can save it cut it up again and save it this way because it doesn't have to come out like that it's just a question of um, uh, getting the size right there's no reason for that okay okay I'll, yeah you have to yeah, play around I'll, with it but you might it. not tr yeah. you might want to try um, snag it in that case <sighs> It could be that um, Snagit would work better for you. I'm not really, um, I'm not really enthusiastic about it. something I have to pay for because I've had previous problems with WizIQ. Okay. You know, it's yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So you don't have to pay anything for Jing. Uh, it's really possible, but this is something that you have to play around with you can't have a whole it's too big right you know okay. what i'm saying yes. you took too much on on jing it's be cut up. Okay. you have to uh, break it down yeah and you know what if you if you get a powerpoint slide you can add it in such a way that you have the different parts you put them together uh like a puzzle mm -hmm. and then you can have the whole thing okay but it's great for powerpoint presentations i love it for for that I guess it's not for everything, but for that, definitely. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Carl, for sharing that. Um, and thank you, everyone, for coming to the class. And keep asking questions in the courseware, because that's where um, 
will be meeting. And if you have any questions, you can also, of course, email me. Send me messages. I'm very easy to find. So thank you. See you next time. Next time is next week. Bye for now.